go back to the OTAs, the mini camps, training camp throughout the season to get to the playoffs. The intensity level will be off the charts. The battle for the Lamar Hunt Trophy begins as we're underway in this AFC Wild Card game. And a short kick taken at about the 16. Oh, a good looking return set up here. Here is Tua Tungavailoa heading out to lead this Miami offense. And what a turnaround season for the Miami Dolphins and their rookie quarterback, Tua Tungavailoa. Going into this season, expectations were awfully low. This team more than exceeded them, got to the playoffs with the rookie leading them. The beauty for him in this game, he's been in big games before. On second down, Tua. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Tunga by a lower. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 38-yard line. 13 yards. And the Dolphins' first down. Here's Gaskin. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. Tongue of Iloa. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold him to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. They'll run now with Gaskin. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line to gain a five on the play. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Third and inches. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. And it's caught by Parker. And the Dolphins are going to be set up with a first and goal as they get the conversion there on third and inches. His first catch of this wild card game, and it's good for a first down. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. Bruce Miller, the fullback, his first carry. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins are going to take a first-quarter lead. So much for being intimidated on the road in the playoffs, right? That was a pretty clinical drive right there. Yeah, they seem to come out with the attitude of, we don't deal with pressure. We create it on the other team. Just took it right down the field and stuffed it in the end zone. And that makes it 7 0 Dolphins. Is good. So that one a long 11 play drive. And it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards.
Jason now Sanders. after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Here's Humphreys. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. So the Titans set to go to work for the first time. And out will come the leader of this offense. And that, of course, is their signal caller. And, of course, it's been mentioned all week in the run-up to the game. But guess what? We're going to say it again. Normally, the number two seed, they get to sit at home and watch this game because they would have gotten an open week, a bye week, and gotten ready to play in the next one. But now they have to play the number seven seed, and we know that's a dangerous game. Are they good enough to win it? Should they win it? Of course. But we also understand they're going to need a big performance from their quarterback in order to advance. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Second and six. It's brought in by Adam Humphreys. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First catch of this wild card game for a 1,000-yard receiver in the regular season. He's got a first down, too. Uh, here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. And they got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Running from the gun with Henry. And he's got this down to the 35. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and ten. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. Man open, that's Chester Rogers. The pass. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. A throw over the middle, taken in. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. His second catch of this wild card game, and it goes for a first down. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. First and goal, and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Got a man, and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. Jonu Smith there to make the grab. And the Titans are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Walking into the stadium, we saw a ton of people donning the jerseys of this rookie quarterback, so you know they love that opening drive, and he throws a touchdown pass. He gave a little bit of confirmation about what they had hoped, right? Because they thought they had a quarterback. They're thinking they have a quarterback. You do this, they believe they've got a quarterback. Look up elbowing each other up in the stands. That's our guy. Now Steven Goskowski on for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. A 10-play drive that time, and it ends with a Tennessee score. Each team's had it. Each team has scored 7-7 here as the kick's away. Jakeem Grant now to return. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Take over first and 10. 
at their own 20. And now back out comes the offense. And work with me here. Is this overhyped or not? You've got a warm weather team on the road in January, and it's cold. What's what's the deal? Is that a factor? Is it not a factor? I think a lot of it depends on the personality of your head coach and how you prepare for things. And, and some things you just can't prepare for. If you're coming from a warm weather site, you can't make it cold enough like it is here in this ball game. But what you can do is just tell the guys, dress for the weather, and then play like we always play. And as the game goes along, typically those guys out there playing, you warm up enough that it really shouldn't affect you quite the same way. Now, if that's all you talk about, if, that, if you put that in the heads of your players, it'll affect them in a big way. It's a gain of two yards, and it's third down. Out of the gun on third down, here's Tua. And that is incomplete. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand, and forcing a three and out, and giving the ball back to their offense. So a change of possession here on the punt. The Titans take over first and ten. Now this offense ready to head back out there. And of course, you know, you wondered who would be that team this year to get the number two seed because remember, as we all know in the past, they'd be home on the couch right now getting ready for the divisional round. That is an excellent point. Instead now, they're playing for their playoff lives. And they can't worry about the idea that, well, in the past, we wouldn't be playing this weekend. The bottom line is, as the number two seed, you do have to play. The good thing, you have the home field advantage. They need to go ahead and play to that level. And you just know that before the season, they were like everybody else thinking, oh, seven playoff teams, yeah, add an extra one. That sounds great. And then you find out, oh, wait, we're the number two seed that has a disadvantage. Not as happy right now. He had over 100 catches in the regular season, and now he's got his first catch of this wild card game. A first down carry for Henry. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. No gain on the play. Brings up on second down, here's Henry. At the 37-yard line. Henry again, the ball carrier. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and 10. It's rare that a man his size can at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in, he's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. Jakeem Grant back deep for Miami. They'll send this up into the Nashville skyline, and it's a good one. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong? You know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? Miami set to take over. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again so it's not picking up a couple of first downs you want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory seven yards the pick up on the pitch and catch second and three at the 14 yard line Tua sets up to pass it and he works it across the 25 before being tackled his first catch of this wild card game and it's good for a first down 14 First down, Miami. Seven, seven, our score after one. Tied seven to seven. Two and now on first down. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. Tunga Vailoa's pass. It'll be a gain of six, and it'll be a second down. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four. 
Yeah, again, they will throw it with Tonga Bailoa. Wide open receiver complete. Tonga Bailoa. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. His second catch of this wild card game, and it goes for a first down. First down. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Two and a throw again. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. The Titans take over first and ten. At their own 15. The Titans set and ready to go on offense and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. On the ground with a tight end. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Second and 11. Over the middle, Rodgers has it. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. That's a gain of four. Brings up third and eight. He'll drop to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher, a really nice run. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. The Dolphins on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. He's going to air one out. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit him over the top unsuccessfully. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Miami. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Adoree Jackson on the return. The Titans take over first. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. 
make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a dolphin shaking up on the play. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Second down and seven. Now this one to his running back out of the backfield. Give him two yards on that play, and that's going to bring up a third down. It's a gain of two. Brings up third and five. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that's caught by Smith. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. Of scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. Henry. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. To Derek Henry. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. This is Henry. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. The Titans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run pass option. You get the sense that next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? Normally you think the tight end's gonna be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, incomplete. Here's Brett Kern now, as he's on to punt for Tennessee. 46 on his first kick, this one in that neighborhood as well. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. The Dolphins offense now heads back on the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex. And the Titan defense steps up here and down he goes. Jack Crawford just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. We said it before the game, and I think it's still apparent. If these guys are going to advance in these playoffs, they're going to have to wreak some havoc coming off the edge. Yeah, wild card round. They told us the wild card could be that defensive pressure. They showed it there. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Here's Tonga Vailoa to throw. He's going to air one out. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Incomplete. On third and long, it's Tonga Vailoa. And oh, he coughs up the football near his own goal line. And they are going to bring this one back. A fumble return touchdown for the Titans. They give some kudos to the defensive coordinator, I think, here. They bring the blitz, they dial it up, and it turns into six points for them. It's so nice to hear you actually give kudos to the defense. It is so nice to such an offensive guy like that. I love it. He dialed things up, and boy, a big play resulted for his guys. Well, you like the credit to the defense there, right, my friend? Yeah, you don't do I ever. The point after try for Goskowski. And he 
He's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This is Jakeem Grant. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Dolphins take over first and 10 at their own 20. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. And they've got to be still reeling from the events of a moment ago. What a turn on that last play. You're knocking on the door. You're about to take it in. You think you're going to get some points on the board. Instead, you cough it up and watch them take it the rest of the way to the opposite end zone. That's a two-score swing that you just gave up. And he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and two. Wants to throw it on second down. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. pass. Complete to Preston Williams. A five-yard gain on the play. So here's a first and ten at the 38. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. It's complete to Parker left side. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. The Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. This is Gaskin on the carry. Tackled by Christian Fulton. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The Dolphins on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and five. From the gun, it's Tua. It's complete to Grant. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. And the Dolphin first down. Tua now on first down. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Tunga Vailoa's pass. Complete to Miles Gaskin. A gain of five brings up second and five. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Play action. Now it's Tua. Brought in over the middle by Grant. And it's a fumble. It's picked up by the Titans. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a Dolphin shaken up on the play. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. So we've got a challenge. Our referee's going to take another look on the tablet. He's going to be watching to see if the knee was down prior to the ball coming out. I love what you just said there. You nailed it because if the ball's shifting or moving before the knee or any other part of the body hits the ground, then that'll be considered a fumble. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. Now thrown to Parker, complete on the slant. 
Tunga by and Lord. down inside the 15 he goes. A Miami first down on a 14-yard pickup. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. The three-yard line. A two-yard gain on the play. And it's third and one, and Tua wants to throw it. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. From three yards out. And the Dolphins are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And no matter how it comes about, when you get good field position, you have to make the defense pay. Short fields usually make for good offense. Sanders now to add the extra point. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So that drive, four plays. And it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. Jason Sanders. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Here's Humphreys. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over, You didn't turn it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. Wow, now we gotta go out there and stop people. So yeah, there's always something bots to be gained from it. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Second and two. Second and two. This one caught by Davis. Yeah, he will get enough for a first down and that will lead us to the two minute warning. A reminder coming up at the half, as we've done all year, we'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. Coach will have the lowdown on what's going on here in this wild card weekend as we begin on the road to Super Bowl 53 in Atlanta. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. First and 10 at the 34-yard line. to throw again over the middle to Smith and he works it to the 30 yard line here right at the 30 they'll contain him to just four second down it's now second and six at the 30 yard line and his throw is going to be incomplete he was looking for Chester Rogers that time and it's third down Xavier Howard on the coverage They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. They'll run for it with Henry, and he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Now a timeout called for by the offense. As the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. They'll look to throw now on first down. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. The intended receiver there was John o. Smith, but it'll be second down. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. Smith catches left side. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts. 
as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Looking to throw. And that is caught. Oh, what a catch at the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Really? Really? Did we just see that? That's a big catch. One-handed, I might add, to pick up a first down. I was going to say, on third down for the defense, it's one thing to give up a reception. You just kind of shake your head on a one-handed catch to pick up the first. Again, he'll drop to throw. Toward the pylon, caught. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. Three yards the gain there, second down. Brings up second and goal at the two-yard line. Here's the option. Shoves, and he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. It's their quarterback scoring on the two-yard keeper. And the Titans are going to take the lead. I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. for the point after. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. That one in the books as a 12-play drive, and it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Kick this one away, and off it goes. From the six. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. The Dolphins take over first and 10. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game, because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. So we're at halftime of this AFC wild card matchup as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. The second of our two games here on this wild card Saturday is at halftime. We'll get back to you two in just a second. But first, let's remind everyone what we've got coming up in tomorrow's action in the AFC. We've got a good one on tap, as it'll be the Las Vegas Raiders doing battle with the Kansas City Chiefs. Meanwhile, nothing settled in our wild card game. It's a tight one as we get ready for the third quarter. Standing by to take you the rest of the way, let's get it back to Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. Both teams try to avoid being one and done in these playoffs as we start the second half of this AFC wild card game. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Titans take over first and 10. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. Good drive last time. Really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? I would anticipate the defense making some changes. 
but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, why? Well, I wouldn't change it up until they showed me a reason to do so. Byron Jones in there to make the tackle. You don't see that a ton, do you? Or the cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Now a throw here to his running back. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. That's a gain of four. Brings up third and five. Out of the gun now on third down. Short throw to Smith. Yeah, boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here's Brett Kern now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. This is taken at the 23. 43 yards on the punt, seven yard return, and it'll be Dolphin football. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. Their defense just came up with a stop right out of the locker room, and now can the offense take advantage? Yeah, we don't want to turn this into something that it's not. It's only a one-score game, so it's not exactly a crucial possession. But at the same time, they'd like to get things started and at least come away with three points. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. He's tackled at the 32-yard line. Looking to pass. Tua able to find Shaheen here. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Complete to Adam Shaheen. A gain of four. And it's third. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. Able to find Shaheen, the tight end. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want him to catch the football first. On first down, Tonga Bailoa. Over the middle, complete. It's Ford. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 11 more on that one, and another first down. And the Dolphin first down. On the handoff, it's Gaskin. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Pretty straightforward play there by the linebacker. He saw the run, went with straight-ahead pursuit and dumped him behind the line of scrimmage. of Iloa to throw on second down here. Yeah, a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 29-yard line. A gain of 14. First down. Dalton. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And down inside the 15 he goes. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. 
from the red zone now. They'll look to throw. And he's going to go down. Back at the 27-yard line, he sacked. Jadavion Clowney, he brought the pressure on the blitz, and he gets there for a loss of 12. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field, down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. His carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action, but other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. So on fourth down, Dolphin kicker Jason Sanders comes on. From the left hash, this from 37. Sanders' kick is good. And that'll bring him back within four. Makes the score 21. Dolphins 17. So no problems at all on that one. And, and you know, there's virtually no win. This is a kicker's dream here tonight. It absolutely is, isn't it? So to me, with no wind, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. They had to force the field goal. The Titans offense now. They get ready to do battle again here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Coverage that time by Bobby McCain. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man when in coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. The Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. They'll set up a throw. A trying for Humphreys, but it's intercepted. Nick Needham picks it off. And he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. He's had a fantastic rookie season, made a lot of lovely throws, but that wasn't one of them. Well, we got to give him one, don't we? I mean, with the year he's having, a lot easier for he and his teammates to accept that throw because for the most part, what they've seen, it's been pretty sensational. Miami set to take over. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal, and I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out now, joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit, even though they wanted the six points. And maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. 18-yard line. On second down, Tua. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Tunga Bailoa's pass. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It's a gain of four, and it's third down. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. Tua sets up to pass it. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage. Back at the 17. So plays like that, Charles, no doubt. They're just going to continue to fuel this crowd. And this defense is already playing well, but it also feeds on the energy of that crowd that you're talking about, and that takes them up to another level. Right now, they're playing really loose. They've got the lead, and what a nice stop they just made there behind the line of scrimmage. For the field goal. 
a 34-yard attempt. The kick by Sanders is good. Is and good. that'll bring him back within a point. The score is Titans 21, Dolphins 20. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces them to settle for three. And it, it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. It's what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Yeah, this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, the offense can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 16 yards, a first down. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice game. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Rodgers. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory, down at the 33. Back to throw again. And he whips that one incomplete there. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Incomplete. Brings up second and 10. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. In the throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. On fourth down, here's Steven Gaskowski for the Tennessee field goal. This from 44 yards out, left hash. And the 14-year trusty veteran able to knock it through. And that'll move their lead up to four now. 24, Dolphins 20. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. And things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to the goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. The Dolphins take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and 10. 
And to give this time to the tailback. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. He's tackled at the 40-yard line. One yard gain. Brings up second and nine. Tua wants to throw it on second down. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Tua Tunga by Lois. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. From the gun, it's Tua. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Ford. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, defense. Man, this is ridiculous, man. They got the lead here in the second half. That's the last penalty you want to commit. And they were getting the ball. Why are you going after the punter there? Just take the football and keep going. So first and 10 after a big mistake on fourth down with a penalty. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. The tackle made by Kevin Byard. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second. And Throwing three. now is Chungabailoa. 37-yard line. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Love the idea, love the concept, but you gotta leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. There he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. And right now, probably just one thing in his mind, it's getting back to the hot start because he's really faded. And ordinarily when that happens, he, the quarterback, as you know, is usually the leader of the squad. Now there's probably a, a silent camaraderie that comes around him saying, hey, guess what? We got you. Don't worry about it. Let's go, big fella, because they know more times than not, he tends to pick things up, and they tend to play well. On first down, Henry. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. Decided to hand it off that time on the run pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice steady gain. Brings up second and four. Set the tone, defense. Let's go. One quarter remains for the right to survive round one here in the AFC. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Second and four. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Smith. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 26. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. They'll run on first down. It's Henry. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. At the 21-yard line. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. At the 13-yard line. On first down, 
Henry. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Taken down. Bobby McCain here, the one who brings him down. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off Byron Jones. And a great return as he's up close to the 40-yard line. We're holding on to the lead at this stage in the second half. Those are the types of plays you really want to try and stay away from. And when you're a rookie, keeping your focus is something...